But what about older buildings? We can't knock them all down, send them to a landfill and start again from scratch. That would be too wasteful and release too much carbon dioxide. Let's meet another architect who knows more about that. He is an expert in conservation and he can tell us, you don't have to build new buildings to build sustainably. He's got a great example to share with us. My name is Scott Abercrombie, I'm an architect with John Gilbert Architects and I specialise in conservation architecture. Building sustainably and retrofitting our existing buildings is vital because 80% of the buildings that we have are the same ones that we'll have in 2050. So if we want to meet the government's climate change targets, we need to find good reasons or good ways of dealing with existing buildings. 107 Nidri Road is a test pilot project for retrofitting tenements. Tenements in Glasgow and Scotland are the most prevalent housing stock that we have. This project tries to reduce the carbon emissions of a tenement flat by around 80 to 90%. Tenements in Glasgow are kind of iconic of the city's architecture. Finding a solution to dealing with tenement flats is really vital to retaining the aesthetic of the city. This project tries to achieve the Passive House Enerfit standard, which is a German energy standard which focuses on the retrofit of existing buildings. In this case, the, the kind of easiest way to explain it is we're looking to reduce people's average energy bills from about £100 a month down to about £10 a month. So it's a really significant reduction in the space heating demand for the buildings. There's a few key strategies that we have to, to achieve the Enerfit standard. The first one is improving the levels of insulation in the building dramatically. Alongside that, we look to improve the air tightness of the building as well. Typically, when we retrofit a building, we, we almost look to put a tea cosy over it. So we're looking to insulate it on the, on the outside, and that's the easiest way to do it. Whereas in this case, because it's a historic building, we want to retain the sandstone elevation to it, we have to look at ways of introducing insulation both inside and onto the rear wall. So it makes it a wee bit more complex than the average retrofit project. Similarly, when it comes to air tightness, you kind of need to think about air in buildings almost like holes in a bucket. So we're trying to plug as many of those holes as possible. To counteract the negative impacts of insulation and air tightness measures, we also look to introduce ventilation into the building as well. One of the key things alongside reducing the carbon emissions of the building is also to make the, the homes healthier to live in and cheaper to run. So around 30% of the tenements in Scotland, um, the people who are living in them experience fuel poverty. So anything that we can do to reduce these energy bills not just makes a difference to the overall carbon emissions of the country and our, our built fabric, but also to the individual people who live in the homes. So alongside the energy bills though, we're also looking to make the houses healthier for people to live in. The air internally is healthier and refreshed more often. We're introducing natural materials that helps to reduce rates of asthma and reduce rates of damp and mould within properties, which can be quite common in tenement flats. Typically, retrofit projects in the past might have used materials that were quite high in fossil fuel related insulation products, so plastic based insulations, that sort of thing. One of the key changes that we need to make going forward is making use of more recycled materials. In this case, we're using a mixture of recycled wood fibre and sheep's wool, but there's a whole host of different products now coming on in the market which make use of existing materials. The challenges of this project really relate to working with the existing structure, but it's vital that we figure out ways to work with existing buildings like this. Basically any house that was built before 1960 doesn't have any insulation in it, so figuring out solutions for doing that responsibly is vital. Over the coming years, government regulations are going to change and we're going to see these changes impact on our own houses, whether that's moving away from gas boilers or making our homes more energy efficient. So projects like this are a key kind of first step on that journey to understanding what the best solutions are for our own homes. It doesn't really matter what building you're in, whether it's Buckingham Palace or a tenement flat in Glasgow. All of these buildings over the next 30 years or so are going to have to think about some sort of retrofit strategy. So I think it's a really exciting thing to get involved in and it's something that not only does it make individual people's lives better, but it also improves the cities for everyone around us. That was Scott in Glasgow with a retrofit project. The Nidri Road site is focusing on energy usage, using very little energy to heat and cool the site, which will reduce energy bills for the tenants. A huge benefit for them. So making older buildings more insulated and don't forget ventilated too, is critical in cutting down our carbon emissions. So what were the other key things he mentioned when retrofitting buildings? Well, one of them was using more natural materials. Do you remember what was put in around the windows? 
and what was put on the inside of the walls? As Scott says, projects like this are going to be more common and more important in the future. There are thousands of uninsulated buildings all over the country. 